<clears throat> um. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna wait until I do my intro. Okay, uh, hello everybody, uh, hello One Girl Many OCs, hello Miss Video Clips, and hello MLP Orly. Hello and welcome to the stream. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I haven't done one of these since I redid my Miles Edgeworth thing. The whole Miles Edgeworth thing where I was freaking out because... One of the fix I was showing to you guys had swearing in it and I had to, like, s s stop that and, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, anyway, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be making a get started picture for, D for DeviantArts. Uh, it's... If you don't know what Get Started is, it's like some sort of thing for like an artist block or something. Like, you follow a prompt and you use the hashtag Get Started. Get Started with the A R and T capitalized, and you get a badge on your, uh, DeviantArt profile. I want that badge, so, uh, I'm doing this. Uh, I actually started the picture already. Um, uh, here, uh, this is what it looks like. I'm going to be re- I'm gonna be drawing myself in my Crystal Guardian outfits. Cause I'm doing the whole, uh, magical warrior thing uh hold on okay is that better can you guys hear me a little better now uh anyway yes so yes uh magical warrior because one of the prompts was warrior so i thought i'd draw myself as a magical warrior because that's what i am even though I guess I would consider myself a magical girl. Like how me and the rest of Team Aurora are pretty much like magical girls, magical boys with what how we transform and all that. But yes. I feel like I should also draw myself as my crystal guardian form because I mean like magical warrior something like that I mean I recently watched a video explaining the difference between magical girls and magical warriors but I honestly couldn't really see a difference so I'm just lumping them together in the same category <laughs> uh so uh yes anyway uh this is what I started with so uh let's get started Winks inspired? Yes, uh, all of the Crystal Guardian outfits, well, most of the Crystal Guardian outfits, were actually Winx Club inspired. Winx Club has been such an inspiration to me, and I've been thinking of making an AU of, that has the World of Winx characters as a homage to how much it's inspired me. But so far, they haven't come out with a new season of World of Winx, what with Winx Club getting a season 8 and possibly a season 9. 
Uh, so yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, the thing is, if World of Winks doesn't get another season by, let's say, um, uh, 2024 or something, that's just a guess, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make something up for World of Winks. Because they just left off on such a cliffhanger that it's just, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Now, I am going to be, uh, having a fanfic playing in the background while I'm gonna be recording this. It's called Delicious Delicious. It's a, uh, grimdark fic. And now, fair warning for those who, are, who don't like grimdark, it's got blood, uh, gore, and dark subjects. I mean, that's pretty much what the premise of grimdark is. So, just a fair warning, if you're... If, like, uh, you're, um, sensitive to, uh, dark subjects such as gore and blood and all that stuff, then click away from this video. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. But, if like last time, there is swearing in this fanfic, or some other topic that I don't want to mention at this point in the stream right now, then I'm just gonna stop it. I mean, that's what I did last time with the last live stream. Uh, so, um, yes. Anyway, let's get this started. Let's get this start, Ed. <laughs> Cause, you know, uh, start, Ed. No? Okay. Anyway, I've been talking for nearly 10 minutes. Let's just get this on. Hear that? Hold on. All right, let's go. Sugar Cube Corner was busy in the late afternoon from the rush of customers stopping by on their way home after work. Toilet Sparkle had expected as much, but the line for the confectionery stood a few feet out from the door. Even at its busiest, there were only four or five ponies idling around the glass cases drooling over which particularly delicious delight in which to partake. And yet, there must be twenty or more waiting patiently for their turn to browse. Twilight debated waiting until the evening, but worried her favorite pastries would be long since devoured if she procrastinated. She still had a busy evening of studying ahead. Astrology, the art of conjuration, reflective wisdom of the great sages, and a litany of other titles paraded through her mind that needed to be read before she could be afforded the luxury of the warm embrace of her bed. Despite her busy schedule, the unicorn got in line with a soft, resigned sigh. The line moved quickly, and Twilight found herself only a few ponies from the front. Twilight waited patiently, and tuned out the gossip of others as she waited. Formulas, queries, and hypotheses danced in her head as the line crept forward. The confectionery's selection was always wide, but the delicacies rarely altered, and so she did little window shopping while waiting her turn, knowing what she would order since breakfast. She did notice, however, a particular pastry proliferating the packages of nearly every patron. A round stuffed donut, topped with a fine green powder the color of spring. Intrigued, the unicorn planned to ask about the unknown delight. Despite the typical selection, Mr. and Mrs. Cake routinely supplied a flavor of the day, and if this new dessert was the root of this uptick of business, Twilight wanted to try it. Finally, Twilight's turn had come, and she breached her place at the head of the line to gaze upon the arrangement of goodies. Pinkie Pie smiled at her from behind the register, eagerly awaiting with a sheet of waxed paper. Hi, Pinkie. Twilight greeted her friend warmly, but the pink pony didn't respond immediately. Pinky only beamed a smile, the blue pools of pristine water of her eyes flicked oddly, and her brows hunched as if trying to remember something important. Twilight couldn't help but notice the hesitation. 
you okay, Pinky? Snapping out of her search, Pinky nodded enthusiastically. Twilight! Of course oh. I'm fine. How are you today? Whoa, that's Doing. Loud. Another momentary hesitation. Okay, that was weird. How come it just like clipped the audio like that? Uh, anyway, um, I think a World of Winx AU would be cool, and you make your own series that would be epic. I thought your joke was funny. Oh, uh -huh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, I have been planning on, um, doing a World of Wings AU for quite a while, but, like, like I said, if they don't continue the series by, like, sometime in 2024, or, I mean, that's just a guesstimate, like, I might have to do something else. Or I'll just do something on my own. And hello, A. Quinn. Glad you could join us today. I didn't get to read your message because it got retracted, but yes. Anyway, let's continue. Twilight things? Uh, that's one way to put it, I guess. But yes, I am busy today. Looks like you are too. Twilight remarked. Pinky gnawed energetically again, and squeezed the wax paper in a way that told Twilight that the pleasantries were over and she needed to choose. I think I'll get my usual today, but I am interested in this new donut everyone seems to be getting. Is it good? Pinky brightened immediately as if a sudden electricity had jolted through her, breaking the natural limits of her hyperactivity. But for Pinky, that was normal. Oh! The ultra-fantastic special one-of-kind stupendous sensation that is our new matcha green tea cruller? It's made of the finest ingredients imported from Nippon at no extra cost to you, our loyal customers. I had a few today, and I think they're the best things since sliced cookies. What an odd explanation, Twilight thought, but dismissed it. More interested in the green stain on Pinky's tongue. From the green tea, Twilight surmised. It was dark, almost black, and nearly coated her friend's entire talking appendage. You know what? Since we're... Uh, friends... Pinky appears to search for the right word, stumbling in her pitch. I think I can let you have a sample for free! Twilight laughed nervously at the imposition. She expected to hear grumbling coming from the ever-increasing line of ponies, but was relieved when they continued to talk amongst themselves or stare at the stacked plate of crewlers behind the counter glass. Still, she didn't intend to incite jealousy. Oh, Pinky. You don't have to do that. I'll gladly buy it at full price. It does look interesting. Pinky turned her head at an angle like a confused pet. Ears stood at attention. She spoke of enthusiasm, but in a subdued, flat method that was unlike the party pony. Okie dokie loki. Pinky began piling the matcha coolers into a box, emptying the display of the treats. Wait, Pinky, I said my usual plus one of those. Not just all of that one. It'd be rude to take them all before the others had a chance to try them. Twilight stopped Pinky, who looked up dumbly, as if she didn't understand. Mr. Cake suddenly appeared of a hot, fresh batch of the crewlers steaming from their powdered green tops. Pinky indicated, There's plenty! and began to pile again. An annoyed <sighs> sigh escaped Twilight as Pinky continued to get her order wrong. Pinky! Be that as it may, I want what I normally get. The extra business must have been getting to Pinky, Twilight thought. She was random, but this seemed so unlike her. Oh, okay. What was that again? Pinky asked, replacing the crewlers in the case atop the fresh ones Mr. Cake had left. Mr. Cake moved quickly and quietly without even an indication of acknowledgement to Twilight, Pinky, or any other pony. Flustered, Twilight spelled out with irritation the confection she wanted. Pinky was being weird and wasting her time. She was ready to be home. Paying quickly and offering only a curt goodbye to her friend, Twilight hurried to leave. She exited Sugar Cube Corner in a huff and didn't perceive the line had grown longer. Huh, that's weird. Why is Pinky acting weird? Hopefully it's not something like cupcakes. Ah, <laughs> uh, hello, Osvaldo Diaz. Glad you could join us today. Yeah, it is pretty cool. 
Honestly, I want to make the Crystal Power Alex. I know it's not the right name, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I'd love to see a fan art of my Crystal Guardian form made by somebody else. That'd be really cool. And, uh, hello, Glory Sea Melody. Glad you could join us. Oh. Hey, Alex918, it's me again. I made my character in a different universe, and I thought about you and you together because the universe and Yokai watched there for four were looking at the same sky. <laughs> As usual, I have no idea what you mean, but I think you're trying to say that you want m your universe and my universe to be the same universe. But getting how I don't really understand your universe, I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, for all of you out there and gonna be watching this video, I am planning on doing a Bendy and the Dark Revival AU, and I'm gonna be putting a Quinn into that universe, but it's only gonna be just her character alone. Like... Nothing else, no one else, not not any of her other characters from her universe, just herself. I mean, I mean, I am planning on doing that, depending on what happens, but like, I mean, considering the, that Bendy in the Dark Revival isn't out yet, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Maybe you can open music as you can. Yeah, I'm planning on, like... Maybe, uh... Playing some music after I'm done with this fanfic. I just don't know what yet. Maybe I'll just go back to Vexento. Haven't heard his songs in a while. Uh... Is it okay if I do a speed paint about it? Um... Yeah, sure, you can totally make a speed paint about it. I'd love to see it. Also, opinion on the new Monkey Kid, the new Lego show? Oh, uh, I've only seen one thumbnail about it. And, um, I'm not really too sure. I don't, I'm not really watching it. I mean, does it have any connection to Ninjago or... Anything like that. Actually, I shouldn't really be saying Ninjago. I haven't really been watching and keeping up with that show any either. But anyway, about Monkey Kid. Uh... I mean... It seems pretty cool. I mean, it's the first 2D Lego show I've ever seen. At least according to what I saw in the thumbnail. I'm not trying to, like, say that I'm not going to watch it, but, like, maybe I will watch it. I'm not sure yet. I mean, if it does have any relation to, like, Ninjago or anything like that, like, is it a part of the 15 realms from Ninjago? Because, uh... If that's true, then maybe I can watch it or something. I don't know. Look up on Google the name, plus it's after Bending in the Dark Revival. Uh. What, what do you mean? Can you open music? Uh, I don't know what you mean, Gloriosa. I mean, Gloricia, sorry. <laughs> you know, funny story, I was actually calling you Gloriosa Melody for the longest time until I actually read your name and saw it was Gloricia. <laughs> I mean, it's... I'm sorry. It's just your name sounds so similar. <laughs> Did you know that the new Hatsune Miko NT prototype was released? I don't really keep up with Vocaloid, even though I do like Vocaloid songs, but, yeah. 
Also, another thing, like, Miku seems to be really popular, like, the most popular Vocaloid, and there are, and just leaves the other Vocaloids in the dust. And... I mean, there are some Vocaloids that people haven't even heard of, and it's kind of depressing. So, yeah. I just want every Vocaloid to have their time in the limelight. Oh my god! Angelite! Hey, what's up? I didn't know you were gonna be joining us! Hello! Um, in case you don't know, uh, Angelite, me and her did an art trade, uh, of a little while back. Uh, she was actually one of my inspirations to becoming a, uh, YouTube artist. Uh, so, yes, um, I, I had no idea you were going to be joining us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, I don't know what else to say. Now, uh, you, now Angel, um, I am playing a, uh, MLP Grimdark fic right now. If you're sensitive to that, then I don't know what to say. Click off this live stream. But, yes. Uh, jeez, everybody is, like, going in the chat all at once. I can't read it. Uh, please remember to say glory. Yes, of course. That's what I've been trying to do. Well, not exactly Ninjago, but it's got some similar Ninjago characteristics, and we have dubbed one character Cyrus Borg's brother, and I always thought it was high, roughly the same world because it could be another. Cyrus Borg. That name sounds familiar. Is that the professor who made Zane? I don't know. It's been a while since I've been in the know with Ninjago. So, it is in a realm in Ninjago? Okay. Yokai Watch looking at the same sky that the name you have searched. It's Japanese in Yokai Watch. Four plus takes place in the present and future. Huh. I see. Angel Light, I know you're the sub-artist of Equestria Fantasy. Oh, Equestria Fantasy, I've never heard of that before. Might have to check that out after the stream. Anyway, yes. Here we go. Let's continue with every with making this. Twilight had retired to her library directly after her foray into Sugarcube Corner. She'd spent the last several hours attacking the neatly stacked pile of books in her living room. She closed the latest with a loud thwap of its leather binding, and suddenly realized how dark it had gotten. Stretching her body as she stood, Twilight closed the curtains over the darkening blues and purples of night. She called for Spike, waited, and was about to call again when she remembered he was in Cantalot for the evening. She would have to meet him at the train station the following afternoon. Twilight paused at the next window and peered out into the dimming world. Ponies were mulling around here or there, many solitarily heading into their homes. Now and again, she spotted square boxes marked with a cupcake, the insignia of Sugar Cube Corner. Perplexed by the ponies, she checked a clock. It was almost 8.15. Sugar Cube Corner should have closed over an hour ago. Were there still ponies waiting to be served? Her stomach rumbled in response. She hadn't been hungry when she returned to the library, but a short, sharp shock of hunger crossed her abdomen, and she dismissed the oddity. The box from Sugar Cube Corner sat upon her kitchen counter, and saliva pooled in her mouth as she approached it like a predator preparing to bounce upon its prey. Opening the lid, Twilight gazed lovingly down at her selection of pastries. A lemon bar, golden, flaky, and mouthwateringly moist. Tri-colored vanilla cupcake, decadent, and piled high with frosting. Raspberry cream cake, succulent whole raspberries perched atop a slice of fudge cake with cream frosting and a drizzle of honey. Oh man, this is making me want some of these. <laughs> I have no idea you're good at drawing humans. Are you crazy? I pretty much suck at drawing. I don't know how I'm able to pull any of this off. I'm always trying to find ways to improve my art, and 
I mean, I just can't seem to get body types right. Uh, or hands. And I haven't even thought of drawing feet, so I just make them these, like, little stubs. <laughs> so, yeah. Have you checked the new animatronic Toxic Spring Trap? Huh. No, I haven't. Cyrus made Pixel. He runs Borg Tower and brought back the Overlord in Season 3. His name was made by Dr. Julian. Oh. Oh! Oh, now I remember! Cyrus Borg, he, uh... Yes! Uh, sorry, I, uh... I kind of skipped a season of Ninjago. But, yeah. Now I remember. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, One Girl Many OCs. Also, uh, in regards to the Ninjago AU, I have recently did the, uh, Origins sp speed paint for, uh, my Lego Ninjago AU, but I'm not actually planning on continuing to do that, uh, AU until, like, 2022 or something. I mean, I do have stuff planned for 2021, it's just I have so much stuff planned for 2021 I don't have time to squeeze Ninjago in. At least, I don't think so. I mean, not right now. But, like, at the moment? Uh... Yes. Anyway, let's get back to talking about pastries. And, of course, the matcha green tea cruller, with its algae color and dustings of powdered tea. It looked plain, uninspired, and, frankly, a little gross. So many others have been enjoying the crueler, and she wondered how such a homely thing could drive so many ponies wild. Taking the pastry in her hoof, she studied it. It was delicately light, as if held together by the air itself. She knew little about cruelers, but had tried a few in the past. They had always had a slightly nutty taste and were very sweet. Not dense like most donuts, she could appreciate the artistry behind them. However, this particular one with the light glaze enveloping its swirled, rigid body would look far more appetizing had the green dust covering the top not been such an ugly, grass-clipping color. It sure didn't look tasty, but with a shrug, she took a bite. Bitterness and sweetness vied for control of Twilight's taste buds in an unholy union of disaster. The saliva instantly caked when it meshed with the tea dust. She breathed and much of the dusting coated her throat as it was carried down towards her lungs. Coughing and sputtering, Twilight spicked the chunk of donut into the trash and quickly got a drink. A film enveloped her tongue and no amount of water could wash it away. The earthy, moldy flavor nearly gagged her and she quickly tossed the remainder of the pastry into the trash. What is wrong with everyone? Yuck! Twilight commented to herself as she brought the raspberry cream cake out in an attempt to extinguish the bitter, disgusting taste still clinging to her taste buds. She could barely taste the cake her favorite treat from Sugar Cube Corner, over the despicable algae-like machta. No longer hungry, or more likely turned off from eating, she decided to continue her studies. Returning to her reading, Twilight smacked her lips absently. The taste of the dessert floated in her mouth like detritus in a stagnant pond. It was unsettlingly bad, like molded granona ground into a fine dust and then rolled in a herd of dust bunnies. For a time, Twilight was able to ignore the distraction, but the words of her book became distant. But the words of her book became distant or dyslexically difficult to read with the persistence of the petrid flavor. It's okay, small mistakes happen. And I did see the Origins video, it was good. And damn, that's a long wait. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm sorry. But I mean, like... I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience, but like... There are stuff planned for, uh... 2021. And... I do have some more Origin Speed paints coming out in the... Planning on coming out in the later months. So, uh... Yes. Look forward to those. At le can I at least tell you the universe ideas kind of reference the Undertale multiverses mixes between Yokai Watch and the future Yotai Watch take place in the next level of the game? Uh. 
I don't know what you mean, Aquin. And then again, I usually never do. I found a song on YouTube search. You search Redial on YouTube? Mm, I've never heard of that song. But I might check it out. Alright, anyway, let's get on with the line arts. Still, she struggled to read the thick volume. In the Fourth Age, Canterlodian civilizations submit completely on. Twilight rubbed her eyes and read the last passage again. In the Fourth Age, Canterlodian civilizations subsist in completely on. She needed a drink. Maybe that would cleanse her palate and alleviate the pestering nuisance so she could buckle down and finish her studies. A bottle of hard cider was tucked away in a cabinet far from Spike's reach. Magically pulling it down from the dark hiding spot in the cupboard, Twilight poured half a cup, paused, and filled the rest of the brim before replacing the bottle. It wasn't often she indulged herself in the company of alcohol, but today had been weird. Spike was away, and the strong liquor would act as a flame to raise the earthy dregs from her mouth. She could indulge today. Gulping unladylike, Twilight finished half the glass immediately. Her mouth filled with the sweetness of the apple juice and then scorched from the powerful alcohol. Her throat burned as it slid down into her stomach, enveloped in a warm, cozy heat. The taste of alcohol was never her favorite, and she typically mixed her drinks to cut back on the savage bite all distilled beverages were accompanied with, but this time, it was just what she needed. The foul taste of soot, mold, and dust were vanquished. Twilight paused for only a moment as she returned to her reading couch to look at the remains of the crueler in the trash. She caught herself staring at it, how it looked as if the matcha had turned a darker green and thickened, growing on the delicate ribs of the pastry. Why, it looked better now than it had in Sugar Cube Corner. Sipping the drink occasionally, Twilight plowed through the pages like a moose through a chandelier. She closed the book with a happy sigh that started deep within her body. Satisfaction was unlike any other emotion, and she couldn't help but smile to herself at another job well done. She levitated the next book in the stack, blew some dust from the cover, and read the title. Delicious. Have some more. A nighttime snack. Her eyes must have played a trick on her, and she read it again. Delinquency of the Mare, A Study of Nightmare Moon. Twilight looked at the title, perplexed. The words seemed to shimmer like a holographic card, an omega of both titles. She had finished her drink absently and could feel the heat radiating from her stomach. A warm blush filled her cheeks. Maybe she had overdone it with the liquor. Now she was seeing double. It was with sudden disagreement that she perceived the slightest creeping notes of dirt and ash at the back of her mouth as if crawling up from her stomach. Come on, really? Twilight stated to herself in frustration. She took her glass back into the kitchen and hurriedly went about filling it again. She wouldn't be studying anymore tonight. Briefly, she questioned the freshness of the dessert if it had such a surviving foulness. She slammed the drink back ungracefully and swallowed hard in thick, heavy gulps. A stream of the liquor poured down her chin and ran along the curve of her chest before dotting the tiles below. She exhaled the fire from her stomach and took great enjoyment from the consuming alcohol flavor, as short-lived as it was. As if in rebellion, the crueler flavor overpowered the liquor. It felt like a coat of wax had engulfed her tongue. Twilight began to feel nervous. Was she food poisoned? She didn't feel sick, but her sense of taste couldn't really be that off, could it? Deciding to check something, she crossed the living room to the restroom. The lights buzzed almost imperceptibly as she flipped the light switch, a safe background hum. Twilight stood before the mirror and turned her head back and forth as she gazed upon herself. Her eyes were bloodshot, probably from the hard apple cider, and she looked stressed. An unamused sound escaped her. Even if it were just her, there were standards she meant to keep. She smacked her lips from the relentless taste and opened her mouth wide. She stuck her tongue out as far as it would go. It was a vibrant, moldy green. Streaking from the turn of her throat, tendrils of color bent and turned like veins across her tongue, the roof of her mouth, and the inside of her cheeks. She wanted to shriek as dread peppered her thoughts. Was this a disease? Was she sick? 
She felt fine, but this wasn't just food coloring alternating the pigmentation of her mouth. This was something else. It's fine. Nothing to worry about. The thought felt alien, and yet undeniably hers. Maybe she was right, just overreacting because of how strange and delicious the flavor of the crueler was. Her stomach rumbled angrily and a wave of nausea broke over her like a tidal wave. The room spun and her vision doubled. It's just the liquor. You drank too much. The words were like honey, sticky and running like a fever dream. She parroted them out loud. Just drank too much. That's it. She felt removed from herself, distant and hollow. Need to settle my stomach. Eat something. It was as if she had just appeared before the box from Sugar Cube Corner. Twilight couldn't recall leaving the restroom or the walk through the living room. She was just here in an instant. Surely she hadn't drank. You've drank too much. Eat. Twilight stared stupidly into the box of her remaining confections. Neither the lemon bar nor the vanilla cupcake seemed as appetizing as before. They didn't satisfy the need growing in her. Her eyes kept turning to the trash can. She would recall them back momentarily, only to find herself staring at the trash again. Her stomach rolled like thunder in protest. The disgusting flavor holding her mouth hostage had ceased to taste so awful. It had a playful, refreshing body to it. She needed more. Delicious. It was delicious. Twilight shook her head, clearing her mind from the pervasive thoughts. Something was wrong. She could feel it in her bones. A deep revulsion. A small panic light flickering somewhere in the clogged mechanism of her mind. Her thoughts came slower, as if they were strained through a slev and wrapped in cheesecloth. All the while, her clearest thoughts didn't seem her own. What's happening? This isn't right. I... Something's wrong. I need to get help. Tearing her eyes away from the crueler laying in a nest of refuse, Twilight ran for the door. She needed to get... something. Help. She needed to get help. It's okay. Just the liquor. It makes you feel weird. All wobbly. Like when you swim all day and get back on land. You just need to rest. And eat. Twilight was at the door to the library. She had been, at least. She felt something in her mouth being switched from side to side, macerating under her teeth. It tasted so good. She found herself back in the kitchen looking down into the trash. The crueler flowed in and purple telekinesis inches from her mouth. Another large bite had been taken from it. The green dust now looked like algae in a swamp. It may have been moving. Panic shot through her like a bullet and she sped a wet, olive green pile out. Tossing the crueler atop the sloppy mess, she bolted for the door once more. Her throat burned in waving lines that led down into the pit of her stomach. Her jaws ached and her tongue felt numb from pain. No! She shouted, adrenaline coursing her veins and clearing the muddle from her mind. Flinging the door open, Twilight found herself in the familiar, but unfamiliar streets on Ponyville. She knew every street by name, but for some reason couldn't recall where the hospital was. She kept repeating the word doctor to herself, a kind of chant to keep the mudslide swallowing her thoughts from burying her purpose. Doctor. Need a doctor. Twilight stumbled into the street and focused with all her energy to remember where the hospital was. Just too much liquor. Go home. Eat. Consume. Delicious. Delicious! Following her hooves, Twilight fought through the strangely unknown streets. She was confident she was going where she needed to be. Something fell from her mouth. A wad of green, wiggling mass. She didn't know what it was and didn't care. Doctor. She needed a doctor. She saw ponies she recognized, but their names were lost in haze. They smiled at her. Parts of their bodies sported long, hairy green growths. That was fine. Darkness swept her occasionally, and she would see flashes of recognizable locations. She was close to what she needed. More ponies. Green vine-like veins. Delicious, delicious! Twilight was waiting patiently in line. All around her were her friends and neighbors. 
Some were more plant than pony, but that was fine. It's what they needed. What she needed. Her hooves had spots of mold growing on them, spreading like swatches of infection up her forelegs, and that was good. The delicious flavor rolled in her mouth and she spit another wad of blackish green algae to the ground. It was her, just as much as she was. All her friends were her too, and she smiled at the thought. It was great to be every pony. Finally, Twilight's turn at Sugar Cube Corner had come, and she didn't need to tell the Pinky Her what she wanted. They had the same thoughts. She wanted more of the Seed Pod Crueler. How could she grow big and strong if she didn't eat enough to reproduce? They are delicious, Twilight, the mold laced Pinky Her said. Delicious, delicious, Twilight agreed. Oh, okay, that was wow. It wasn't really grim dark, more darkish. But yeah. That was Oh wow. Alright, uh final thoughts on that. Best way to describe it is that it's like uh Resident Evil My Little Pony. <laughs> It's the best way I can describe it. Anyway, yes. <laughs> uh. Plus, I made my bendy design of. My character's in kind of form of a cat, okay? And I thought about that idea because of the multiverse idea because Sans from your universe knows me and Ink Sans came. All right. All right. Maybe you can search Redial on YouTube after you hear the story. Um, well, it's a song I never heard before, and I don't know what it's like, so I think I'll listen to it in my own time. In yo- Uh... Hello, uh... Russian person that I don't know what your name is? I'm sorry, I can't read that. In Yokai Watch 4, between there is one more world outside the three worlds that make up the setting of the adventure of fourth world, only in Yokai Watch seems to exist the key to opening the door. Okay. Wait. Wait, what? What, do you, what am I waiting for? Uh, anyway, let's just play this. Yeah, here we go.
No, you, I guess you can't send links, Gloricia. Just letting you know because the game is awesome. Uh, I see. Well, I mean, I'm not really too interested in Yokai Watch. Or anything like that, uh. Actually, uh, speaking of anime. Uh, have you seen Lolly Rock? It's a magical girl show. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. Um. But, like. I kind of lost interest in it after a while. I mean, it is pretty cool, and here everyone in the Magical Girl community is saying that Magical Girls have taken a darker turn, or whatever. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of anime, uh, have any of you ever heard of this show or anime called Scantigo. It was a show I used to watch back in like 2014. It was on Cartoon Network and it was about these kids who would go across the universe racing these little toy cars. Well, I mean, they weren't toy cars, but that's the best way to describe them. Uh, they, um, they went to the school, they had a mentor who, before they went to the school, they had a mentor who would, who taught them, and, uh, um, yeah, they went to the s oh, sorry about that, that was my dog, Ugh. give me a second, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that, I had to make sure that, um, my dog wasn't barking. Anyway, uh, so yeah, scan to go It was about these kids who raced toy cars across the universe, and <coughs> it was a really good show. I kind of got hooked on it, but the thing that really peeved me off, <coughs> and that, <sighs> hold on again. Sorry, again, it was my dog. Uh, so, yes, um... So, like... They raced... These toy cars across the universe, and there were these, like... Furry... Three furry girls who were the main antagonists, and there was this other antagonist who had yet to make his debut, but... As the villain. I mean, he already was the villain by the time the show, like, got to that point. But, like, I don't remember if the main cast ever found out. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But the thing that really peeved me off about what happened with the show is that... They were supposed to do the, um, series or season finale. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but, like, they were supposed to do the, um, one with the final Grand Prix on Earth with all their alien friends, and they never ended up showing the, uh, they never ended up showing that episode. Even though it was supposed to be airing that day. I should know because I had a TV guide thing set up on my TV. And it said that it was supposed to be airing that day. But instead it was a freaking Teen Titans Go episode. 
So, like, yeah, that really peeved me off, because after that, they didn't air the show again. I don't know what happened. But Teen Titans Go! replaced the normal time that it was supposed to be airing. And even still, it said it was supposed to be airing on the TV Guide. Y you know? So, yeah, that kind of turned me off the show, and I didn't really watch it again, and I never brought it up to anyone until today. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hmm, CNN didn't have a show like that. Maybe I just missed it. Yeah, yeah, I think you did miss it. It was like back in 2014. I wouldn't be surprised if not many people know about it. Hmm. But, yeah. If you want to know what Yokai Watch is in anime, it's a trailer for Yokai Watch 4 has the trailer and Yokai Watch Academy. Uh, all right, sure. So, yeah, that was scan to go. I mean, I might Google it after the stream just to see if it's still a thing that was around. But, yeah. Anyway... That was that. I thought that was an interesting... That would be an interesting topic for, uh, discussion. In, uh... This stream. All right, let's get back to the music. Verizon knows how to build unlimited uh, rights. Ads. Start with America's no most rewarded network, offer it at a price built for everyone, <laughs> and on a phone everyone loves. Uh, iPhone 11 on us when you buy select iPhones, because I'm everyone deserves the best. Eight, this you. is unlimited built right. All right, so, yeah.
It's just when you said anime, I have to tell you because it's amazing. I don't know if you take Sound Quest, but maybe this cover of Mary's theme from Ebe. Ebe is the game, not the singer. It's nice to listen to. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Ebe. Yeah. It's really taking the RPG world by storm. I mean, a lot of it was really unique. I mean, the fact that the health system was literally just like roses. That was pretty neat. But, yeah. And also how all the enemies were like paintings. That was also pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a crazy fan of that game. But it's still pretty neat. And I still recommend that you guys check it out if you hadn't already. So, yeah. Can you search for Tell Your World on YouTube? Oh, Tell Your World, I love that song. I love it so much that I even made a Steven Universe French Bayou cover of it. I mean, I haven't posted it to YouTube, but like... I mean, I was planning on posting it to YouTube after my whole... the whole change your mind thing. But like... Considering... But that didn't happen, so, like, I'm still saving it. I mean, you might see it in the future, and a might. Might is the key word here. I don't know if I'll actually, uh, do it, but yeah. So, yeah, uh, Tell Your World is, uh, it's a really beautiful song. I mean, like Vocaloid, it's a... I guess it's a really neat platform for, like... people to make songs using. And, like, sometimes the songs really do deal with dark subjects, such as, uh, abuse, uh, death, um, and just, like, people killing each other, that sort of thing. Also, uh, speaking of dark topics such as abuse, I should say that I'm very sensitive to that sort of topic. Ever since I did a unit on a streetcar named Desire in my junior year of high school, it's just really gotten to me. Like, anything that has- that involves abuse or a parent mistreating a child or anything like that, it just- it really upsets me. It's gotten so bad that I could barely function and I had to start taking medication. So, yeah, I just, abuse is just a really hard subject for me, and for no apparent reason at all, you know? I mean, like, also, like, I should also tell you that, like, I mean, I'm watching through all of the Ace Attorney games because I have something planned in the future for the channel for Ace Attorney. And, I mean, when I watch through Ace Attorney Investigations 2, uh... There's a character who has a verbally abusive father, and... Well, I mean, it wasn't, like, right off the bat verbally abusive. Like, I mean, sure he was calling his son an idiot, but it, at first I just thought it was like... Oh, he's an idiot, but he's my idiot, you know? And then, he he said something later in the game. He said that someone as stupid as you doesn't deserve to be my son, or something to that caliber. And that was just, like, a real big punch in the gut for me. I mean, like... The Ace Attorney games... I mean, sure, they're dark with what solving murder cases and all, but I didn't think they would go that far. You know? And... It's just... 
and to see that they actually dealt with a topic such as domestic abuse. It just... It was like the ultimate F you for me. I mean, I had like really high expectations or like really high regards for Ace Attorney and just... They just go and do that to me. It was just... I mean, I didn't know what to say about that. Well, I mean, I did take comfort in the fact that the main character, uh, Miles Edgeworth, he, uh, he did kind of share the same opinions as me about that whole subject, so I'm kind of happy about that. But point being, it's just... Subjects like this are everywhere. I mean, sure, they're hard subjects to talk about, but at the same time, we can't not talk about them and just ignore them, you know? That's just what it is. And my dog is whining. Emma, be quiet! <sighs> yeah, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with her. I mean, every morning, I wake up pretty early, like at around 7 o'clock or something, and I'm always the one to take care of her in the morning, like let her out to go to the bathroom and feed her. <sighs> and, like, so yeah, I let her out to... I let her out to go to the bathroom and... I'm sorry, one second. Emma, what are you barking for? You're not going into Nick's room. You can come into my room, I'm streaming, but you have to be quiet. No, Emma, quiet. <sighs> All right, I'm back. And now I have to leave again. Oh my god, my, draw my dog is driving me crazy. I just want to stream this live stream. I'm really sorry. I don't know what's gotten into her. I mean, anyway, like I was saying, I wake up very early, so I'm always the first to take care of her. And... She... Uh... After I'm done taking care of her, she always hangs around my brother's doors, waiting, wanting to go in. But I guess she doesn't realize that humans need sleep too, and is just... Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> She's just... I mean, she really is quite hyper at times. I mean, she's only eight years old. And... I don't know, she's just been acting really weird lately. I don't know why. But, yeah. 
That doesn't mean I don't love her. She's still my Emma doggy. <laughs> I love you, but Witch's House will always be my favorites. Yeah, Witch's House. Uh, that one is pretty neat. I think that's what sparked the entire RPG maker game craze, actually. It was really cool, really scary. I mean, the true ending is a bit of a punch to the gut. But, like, yeah, it's still a pretty good game. If you're into horror, and if you're into magic and witchcraft, then check out Witch's House. Highly recommend it. The Yokai Watch is anime after all, right? Yeah, I've only ever heard of anime for Yokai Watch. However, I know Tell Your World is a beautiful song, but I think you, you used Rolling Girl Mail cover during Your Friends Are Always There For You speed edits. Oh, yeah. Rolling Girl. Yeah, I don't... That song is one of the songs that deals with harsh subjects. Like, be it self-harm or I don't know what, but... Yeah. Plus, even if you don't taste gaming, his dog Molly passed away. Don't know taste gaming, his dog Molly passed away, so give your dog some hugs. And if you checked out his channel, that's fine. Oh, yeah. I don't know what Taste Gaming is, but, uh, send my regards to his dead dog. Uh, I'm sorry about that. And the Ace Attorney's game, when you had said spirits, I have to tell you about Yokai Watch, has some dark stories as well. Like, Jamba Jane got killed by a truck. Oh, wow, that is... that's awful. Huh. Do you have a Discord account? I've been thinking of making one for the friendship I use. Where you can come on and ask me questions that you have about the friendship I use and I can answer them. But then again, I don't know if it costs money to have a Discord account. So, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Ugh. Now here is the eyes. The eyes, like... They can usually either make my peace or break my peace. I mean, you don't know how many pieces of my art have been ruined all because the eyes were too big or not big enough or not right. But so far, this is looking good. Might have to end the stream soon, though. Because I really don't feel like continuing this right now. <laughs> uh... And hearing sometimes Koma-sen and Kojiro from Yokai Watch are shadow like they got killed by, cru by a crushing statue. Well, I mean, Yokai are pretty much Japanese ghosts, so. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Wow. That is awful. I mean, imagine getting crushed by a statue. Ugh. About your dog. It is barking very loudly. However, I almost laughed about your dog starts to bark. <laughs> yeah. She is a very loud barker. I mean, I also used to have a cat, and he meowed very loudly. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a tendency to get loud pets. <laughs> I also had a guinea pig, and she would go crazy and squeaking a lot. <laughs> So yeah, again, loud pets. <laughs> uh. Discord is free and servers are free to make. Really now? Okay. So. Hmm. Maybe I might set up a Discord in the future then. Who knows? Alright, thanks for that. Zero, three, four, seven. What, what is that? Some sort of code or birthday? Uh, is that a reference I'm not getting?
Just letting you know because the Yokai Watch Shadow Side anime with Komasan and Kamajuro. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be watching Yokai Watch. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot the most important piece of this thing. Komasan is a spiritual jog, and Kamajiro is a frog. I see. Okay. If you want to check out their sprites, it's fine. Pie? Oh, it's the pie sequential number thing. Oh, I get it. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, well, random, but okay. <laughs> anyway, let's continue the music. The most hydrogen peroxide in the toothpaste. Thank God for skip apples.
I'm gonna be honest, the eyes are kinda dull, but I guess this is without the eye signs, catch lights, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's true, but like, I'm, uh, I also, um, make these eye effects. I'm also trying to get better with the eye effects, too. Like, I try to make them realistic, like, akin to the real human eye. Like, if you were to look at your eyes in a mirror, you'd see these, it has these, like, little, uh, strings in the eye. Well, not exactly strings. I mean, I don't know how to describe them, but I guess, like, these little lines in the eye. I guess lines is the best way to describe them. So, like, yeah. You'd see these little lines in the eyes. And... Yes, uh... So I'm trying to, um... Make my eyes both cartoony but realistic, if that's possible. And, uh... In case you haven't noticed, I use anime eye styles for, like, different creatures, such as ghosts, or skeletons, or dragons. Because they aren't like human eyes, they're not going to be like human eyes, so I decided to make them anime-ish. So, yeah. <sighs> I'm just letting you know that in Yokai Watch Shadow Side, Okay, uh, oh, you're back? Huh, I didn't know you left, Gloricia. Well, welcome back to the stream. Although, I think it's gonna be ending soon. Uh, I know what you're talking about. So I dreamed a few weeks ago. Oh, you had a dream? Well, that's cool. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, sometimes I look for my dreams for inspiration for my AUs, because, I mean, I can't really come up with anything original without having something to, uh, back me up. Like, you know when those, like, creative writing courses or, like, creating, creative writing assignments you used to get in your English class where you're given a story outline and you're supposed to, like work with that, work with that, try to come up with something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm the best at those, but I'm not the best at coming up with anything original. So, yeah. <laughs> I saw a dream on DA. Uh, okay. I don't... Okay. But yeah. Anyway, uh... I had a dream recently about this bird that shot spikes. And, uh... I might use it for the friendship AU. Like, a bird that stores thorns in its feathers. And when it feels threatened, it flaps its wings and it shoots the and it shoots the thorns out um all right this is looking pretty good i'll just add the cutie mark then I'm gonna end the stream. I mean, it's not done, but I wanna take a break from working on this. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about my Microsoft accounts.
All right, I'm almost done. Dog is whining. Ugh. Um. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do for this picture for now. It's coming along really nicely, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm really liking it so far. Actually, there's one part of it that I'm going to have to fix, give me a second. Oh, what can you do? Okay. Yeah, uh, so this is how it looks so far. I'm just going to have to go back in later, add the shading, add all the eye effects, add the lighting effects, the background, the magic, the magical effects, and yeah, that'll be, uh, finished. You might see this up tomorrow. So, yeah. Where's the second crystal? Oh, well, uh, you see, at the point of the French Bayous where Team Sabuna, or Team Aurora, got the Crystal Guardian outfits, or Crystal Guardian powers, they, um, they didn't have the second crystal then. I mean, they did get the second crystal like a few weeks later. But in regards to at this point in time, there's uh, no second crystal. And you can also tell that this was before or in that period of time because my cutie mark magic necklace is blue in this. I mean... In the more recent AU pictures you've seen me, they're, uh, it's, it's pink. But I don't have that pink necklace yet. So this is all that it is for now. So yeah, don't freak out. Me leaving out the second crystal is completely intentional. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, that's all I'm going to be working on for now. Um, so, uh, yes, um, I really do hope that you uh, enjoyed this stream. It was, it's always fun to do. I really like streaming, but thing is, I don't know what to play while, uh, doing the stream, whether it be music, or stories, or fan fictions, or whatever. So, uh, yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you for all who joined into the stream. Uh, please expect the completed version of the picture sometime tomorrow. Uh, 
So, yes. I really hoped you liked it. Uh, so my OC in your friendship at you, she is one of Team Aurora while Jake is in the Guardians of Harmony. Okay. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I really hope you liked this stream. And I will talk to you guys later. This is Alex918 signing off. Bye!